Greetings, people of the world! Matthew back with you here at Novora Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Eternal Sonata. So, last time, we had the opportunity to make our way here to Fort Fermata, and we also got to understand a little more of the person that is certainly becoming more and more of a villain in this game, and that is Count Waltz, the person who we want to speak about, about a myriad of problems that are plaguing the Kingdom of Forte. So, we now want to make our way into Fort Fermata here, which is the first of the ma major puzzle locations in this game. There is definitely a puzzle element to this place, and you'll see why when we go in. It's also in very, very long as well. So you'll need to make sure that you come well prepared into here. So this is the only way you can get in. That door right there is locked. And it will not be open until we beat the boss of this place. And yes, there is a boss in here. So yeah, as I mentioned before, this place is huge. And the enemies are s very tough for early stage of the game. So we, what we want to do here is take a left. Because as you saw, there was nothing down going straight down. So we have pallet swapped rats to deal with. Building themselves as the Lord of Darkness, even though they're just mice. But that doesn't mean that they're not strong. And sometimes they'll pause like that. And that, that's just part of their AI. Um, no, I do not believe they are close enough for double play. And Viola is close enough that we can have her just go melee. And her dark ability, her dark special ability, does use a melee attack, so... That's very helpful. Now let's see if we can cause a lot of damage on these other rats. Alright, there's another one gone. Now this one. Let's see if we can put it away. No, we cannot. Oh, and... Oh, yeah, Viola had a back turn. There was no way I could defend myself against that attack. So, time for revenge. Yeah, look at the damage she causes. <laughs> it's a piece of cake for her. And Allegretto was able to get to experience level 11. But we're actually going to put Viola and Allegretto away for a while because... The other two are at experience level 10, and truth be told, we actually want to grind up everyone. Everyone does gain experience levels even if they're not in your active party, but those who do, are not in your active party get, the, get their experience at a much slower rate, and it's actually a necessity to do a lot of grinding in here before you go anywhere else. So let's see if we can get more experience with this trio. Well, it'll be the same number, but it's just an opportunity for those three that are experienced level 10 to get summoned. My back was turned, so I would not have been able to defend myself against the, that attack. Can I get a little closer? Not quite. Yeah, I would prefer that I got a little closer, but not that close. Alright. Fire away there, beat. And now, special ability. Alright. There is a double play possibility here. Let's see if we can take advantage of this. Yeah, we're gonna get a higher enhanced special ability here. Did we get... Yes! It's a double play! It was a delayed double play, though. But we did get it. Yeah, sometimes that'll happen, that... An enemy will have been killed, but it won't actually register until your character's turn is over. That'll sometimes happen when you use a special ability, but hey, it's if you, as long as the enemy is dead, that's what you're looking for. So now, going up here. Yeah, I got a lot of lives to climb, there's a lot of dead ends to deal with, and like I said, this place is long because it is just immense. Oh, double play possibility. Alright, here we go. Ooh. How the heck was he defending me? It's back his turn. I don't get that. I'm gonna have B come in here and continue. Alright, go. Ah, B. 
this polka go full throttle here with her parasol. I can't quite get it. It's close, but we couldn't quite kill it off. Oh, thanks a lot. Ah, back turned. Oh. <laughs> I've never had this happen before. As far as unique situations, that was definitely a first. Oh, finish it off. Double play. Nope. No, in fact, that rat's still alive, very much alive and kicking. Ah, can't get it. Go. Yeah, it only needed one more hit and that was it. Yeah, sometimes that'll happen. Sometimes that will happen, but there's not much you can do about it. Okay, onward. Yeah, we cannot step over to there just yet, but that um, little room there is going to play a very important part in this place as we go along. Okay, so in that last round, both Beat, no, both Frederick and Beat, Frederick and Polka gained experience levels. Man, yeah, Frederick and Polka gained experience levels, so now everyone at least has a minimum max HP of 3,000. Yeah, my head's been stuffed for a while now, so I can't think clearly. And that last battle wasn't easy. The rats were not positioned for my favor. They were able to get a lot of shots turned on me. Okay, so Beat got an experience level on that last round. And so yeah, there's still a lot of mice to fight around here. Okay, they're mixing it up now. There's also one of the um, enemies that we fought when we first encountered Viola here now. So we gotta deal with those gu these things too. And there may be a double play possibility, or even a triple play possibility. Uh, okay, that time I was able to defend myself. Okay, go. Double play, maybe even a triple play if I'm insanely lucky, but I don't think that'll happen. However, we can always hope. Oh, really? No way. No way. Well, then let's see what Polka can do. I mean, might, might as well go all the way with this. Can we get a triple play here? Come on, triple play! She got a triple play! Yes! Polka with a triple play! First one of the game! Alright! Way to go, Polka! See, you can do it! Well done! <laughs> well, I guess she's got Frederick to thank and myself because I wasn't quite able to complete the get the finishing maneuver, the special ability that Frederick had off in time, so I guess Polka's got Frederick to thank for that triple play. Alright, so as I mentioned before, this room will actually play a significant role in this puzzle. Huh? It felt like the room sank for a second. Is this room floating on water? And the answer is yes. You see it says moving room down there. We have to use a complex sequence of switches spread throughout the fort to take this chamber and move it from one side of the fort to the other side in order for us to escape from here. In addition to that, we also have these monsters here which are really good for grinding on because they come out in threes and they give you the maximum possible experience points which you can get in here which is 540. Alright, here we go. Start beating them up. Ah, can't quite get him. And Beat's attacking the wrong guy. Yeah, sometimes that'll happen. You want him to target one enemy, but he'll target something else. But don't fault him for it, because it is helping you in the long run. Not quite. 
Well, good thing about Shea Comet is that it does stun some enemies for a moment. Which can help you from suffering more damage. Uh, here it comes. I smell a double play possibility. Or maybe not. Can't win them all. But Polka may need to be healed sometime soon. However, we're doing quite well. And you're gone. This is but a brief part. Yeah, cause we're gonna be fighting that same trio over on this side. And you may have noticed the little icon here. Hey, there's something written here. At I found moving room opens path. And I outside. Yeah, that's basically to tell you what I'd already have told you. Alright, so now we can leave this room. And as I mentioned before, if you leave a place and re-enter that section, the enemies will respawn for you. And this is the this moving room is actually the best place to do grinding, and we will need to do grinding over the course of this journey. I'll do my best. Possibility? It could be. Let's see where this goes. It is a double play. All right, awesome. Yeah, there wasn't much hope for that one as a double play, but it worked out. All right, so we've made it to the first checkpoint, first place to save the game in here, but we're not done yet. And then we can continue. How is everyone doing on experience level? Okay, Frederick and Polka are about to get to 12. Viola has reached 12 already because of the experience that she's been accumulating outside of the party. Um, I want to see if she's gained her special ability, her next special ability yet. No, she's not there yet. But she'll get there eventually. All right. Now, we do not want to go in that room because no there's nothing that we need in there yet. In fact, I don't think we need to go in there at all. Yeah, that's one of those trick rooms that we're going to see over the course of this journey. Now, what we want to do is go around the long way. And on that last battle, Polka and Frederick both did get to experience level 12, and Frederick got a new ability. Um, this is known as Coup de Jarnac, which is a ability that hits one person in front and then hits on a recoil someone in the back that's behind the, behind the character so it, it is an interesting ability um, but we're not going to use it at this time all right so let's keep on going because we have to go to the perimeter of the fortress's paths now we want to go this way and Beat was able to get to experience level 12 on that last battle. So everyone's at 12 now except for Allegretto. So we're going to have to change that. So let's bring out... Um, not, to be honest, I'm not really sure. Because I would still like to have Frederick and Polka both on the field. Since they, I will both still need their healing. So we'll take out Beat for a while. Alright, onward. So everyone got to 12 but Allegretto. But he'll get there after this next round. And Allegretto got to experience level 12 now, and he has now a new ability. 
and that ability is Void Edge, and I actually prefer this one over Phantom Wave for now, so we'll hold on to Void Edge for a while. So, now we're continuing around the perimeter. That room does not become important until much later. And after that last battle... Mr. Frederick, he has in a bit of trouble, so we need to throw him... Um, well, we're collecting floral powders over the course of our journey in here, so we'll throw him one of those. Yeah, because we're getting low on peach cookies. But we'll keep on going, because we're getting close to the end of the perimeter, and where we're gonna close off the episode. I believe there's one more enemy along this path. Yeah, you can get see in, how insanely long this perimeter is and that you have to get there in order to get to the dividing point. Whoa, there was an enemy. How pitiful, you soulless creatures. And here we go. There could be a po double play possibility depending on where this goes. Where is he going? Yep, he's going for Allegretto. Go. Come on, double play. Double play, Allegretto, double play. Double play. Yeah, I think it's pretty much luck at this point that we're gonna get the double play. Boom! Double play. Nice. I love it. I love it. Woohoo! And we should be close. Yeah, it's hunched over. We should be able to finish it off with Polka, and we do. That's all there is to it, so now we want to go in here. So let's take the save, and so I will take the time to um, go ahead and make that save and prepare myself for moving over to the next section of this Fort Fumata. And so, let's go ahead and save the top of the screen then, say goodbye to our last chapter one save file. And that'll do it for a while, so this will be a good place to call it. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Eternal Sonata. And when I join you again, we'll make our way over to the right side of Fort Fermata in order to start really getting this puzzle into motion. So until I see you again, everyone, this is Matthew at Novora Autism saying take care, and I'll see you soon.